I, 23 female, recently moved in with my boyfriend, 23 male. We've been dating for a couple of years now and my parents didn't know about him. This was because they wouldn't approve for various reasons, different religion and culture. Well, they found out. Believe it or not, but my mum got suspicious and followed me, saw me with him. They gave me absolute heck and I don't think I cried that much in years. The things they said about me and my boyfriend were extremely hurtful and I decided enough was enough. My boyfriend immediately had me move in and my sister helped. It's been a couple of months now and my mom has cooled down. My dad won't talk to me but I don't care anymore. My mom and I will have civil conversations though she hasn't apologized yet for following me. I don't think she ever will. Anyways, none of them know my address. My sister and friends do but my parents do not. They have absolutely no idea where I am. And while my mom claimed not to care the first month, she began asking me to give her the address so she knows I'm safe and where to look if something ever happened. The thing is, I don't want to. She promises she won't tell my dad until he cools down, but I don't believe her. I also don't want her to come over and find more things to judge my boyfriend for either. The pros just don't seem to outweigh the cons for me. My mom's really upset about this. She keeps saying that she's just trying to make sure her daughter is safe and that I don't understand how scared she is. She said that I'm being inconsiderate towards her and causing her a lot of stress. My boyfriend said that it's ultimately my choice, but he'd prefer that my dad doesn't find out, lol. My sister doesn't know what she'd do, but said that our mom is pretty stressed. I feel a little bad, but again, I don't feel it's worth it. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's a trap. Of course it's a trap. This whole mess started when these people followed you and spied on you. You escaped. That's the thing your mom and dad are most upset with now. Not your safety, but that you're out of their reach. Be prepared for when they find out the address. Not if, when. Definitely a trap. If something happens, OP's sister knows where she is, so it's not like she's dropped off the face of the earth. OP, they can reach you by phone if they need to get in touch with you. As long as you respond to them in a timely manner, if only by text, there's no reason for them to claim to be worried. Your boyfriend took you in because your family is toxic. He stated that he doesn't want them to know. Please do not betray his trust by telling them. It isn't just about your safety, but his as well. Yeah, pick up the phone and tell those people that due to their inappropriate behavior and the way they treated your boyfriend, you will not be giving them your address. Tell them to self-reflect, that they owe both of you an apology, and if they can't do that, you wish them well and go no contact. They sound controlling, classist, or some form of religious stupidity, so I wonder why you would even want that. Yeah, I'm surprised that the mom and dad haven't escalated to a private investigator or air tags or hacking her phone by this point. OP, your mom keeps saying that she wants you to be safe, but the fact that you're in a safe place is causing your parents to lose their minds. Don't give them your address. Not now, not later. You may want to even stop by your local police station preemptively to make sure your family doesn't list you as a missing person. You are an adult and can live a life they don't 100% approve of. If she can't agree with that, it means she thinks that your boyfriend may be the one who will hurt you. She thinks that your boyfriend may be the one who will hurt you. Statistically, this isn't an unreasonable thing to worry about. I understand Opie's mom being a little stressed, not knowing the boyfriend. It definitely sounds like Opie's parents are against the relationship for other reasons. And the fact that Opie's friends and sister are on her side tells me Opie isn't in any particular danger. But your argument by itself isn't a very good one. Update. Thank you all. I didn't realize how ridiculous her inconsiderate statement was till reading these comments. Now I'm getting angry again because there's no way the woman who stalked me, took pictures of me kissing my boyfriend and showed them to my dad right in front of me and laughed when my dad called me terrible names, is the same woman that claims to care about me. Moms don't do that. I wouldn't do that at least. Believe it or not, my sister's relationship with my parents is a lot worse than mine. She's been going against them since she was like 12. I was the one that always followed their rules, so I don't believe she'll crack. She's never cracked in her life when it comes to them, but they've also never found out about any of her boyfriends. Still, I might do the move to a new address thing. Thank you again for the advice. My son and his partner, both of whom are in their early 40s, were married on Friday. They decided to have a very simple courthouse wedding with only a select few close family members in attendance, followed by a backyard barbecue reception at their home with more friends and extended family invited. 
Leading up to their event, I had misplaced the date a couple of times as my phone calendar has been acting up and not syncing with my computer, which was the device I had used to input their wedding. Due to this, I had a few times accidentally gone to make other plans for this weekend before being corrected. Erroneously, I responded I'd forgotten about their little barbecue get-together and I would change my other plans. Again, my phone calendar has not been populating from my computer. Additionally, unlike my daughter's wedding where I was very involved, my son and his partner wanted everything to be understated and simple and so I had no involvement in planning. They've been partners for close to 20 years at this point and I consider them basically married for all intents and purposes. I'm finding, however, now that the event is over, my daughter has told me she didn't like the way I spoke about the wedding or reception. In particular, she didn't like that I referred to their party as a barbecue, apparently. I find that since their father and I divorced, that all the fault lies with me in my children's eyes. I wasn't aware of any offence, but my son will never tell me when he's upset and prefers to more or less ignore me half the time. I'm still not sure what social faux pas I've made with the younger crowd this time. Perhaps nothing, and my family in particular is sensitive. Of course, I will apologize to my son if he took any offense. You are the idiot. Your son was getting married and you needed a calendar to remind you of the date? Do you really not see that the problem is not merely the semantics here? You repeatedly forgot the date of their wedding. You referred to it as their little barbecue. Lord, you could have written it on a poster on the fridge if you were having tech problems. That last paragraph screams, missing, missing reasons. She claims that since her divorce, everything she does is wrong, and she doesn't understand what faux pas she made with the young people. Mom, young and old, nobody wants one of their huge life milestones to be repeatedly called a little barbecue get-together. And I'm positive you know that, but you're too self-centered to admit you're wrong. Or you. I cannot figure out the complicated mechanics of grabbing a post-it and a pen and jotting down a totally important date of my son's barbecue, I mean wedding, so that I will definitely not forget and not book other stuff in said date, like doctor appointments about my memory, because the calendar app is failing me. Woe is me, whatever shall I do? I wonder why your son grey rocks you, OP. You sound like a lovely victim, I mean mother. You know it's not a little barbecue get-together, it's their wedding reception. You also don't forget the date. You honestly just sound like you're being passive-aggressive because they didn't involve you with the planning. Apologize. Do better. This whole thing smacks of resentment. Update. I will of course reach out to him, but I cannot read his mind or anticipate his reactions. In this regard, he takes after his father. He would rather be out in his workshop tinkering away than sit down and have a conversation with me. Emotions are not a strong suit to the men in my ex's family. Oh, and they absolutely could easily have afforded a nice ceremony, venue and catering the entire thing. His partner is making decent money and my son does well for himself as well. I would understand if their options were limited due to finances, but they just didn't care enough to make the day nice. Who has a barbecue in the winter in the rain? Just silly. At least it ended up decently nice on Friday, only mild showers and sun peeking through the clouds occasionally. Still too cold for me, so like everyone else, I spent most of my time indoors. My use of the word little was not meant as condescending, but rather to denote the size as they invited around 25 guests total. Beyond that, it was a barbecue. I, female 30, live with my husband, male 31, and our young son. My sister, female 22, is still in college and had to move in with us three months ago because she had some issues with her roommates. Things were going fine until this argument, also, she doesn't work, but my parents sent her some money for textbooks and groceries, although she barely ever has contributed to the household since she moved in with us. We also live in a different state from our parents and family, so I'm basically throwing her in the streets by kicking her out, which would make me a big idiot. So, my son comes back from school at around 3pm or 3.30. My husband works until 6 and I work until 5, although sometimes I have to stay an hour or two extra. This isn't normal, maybe three or four times per month when we're behind in a project. We had a babysitter that would wait until he's back, he comes home via the school bus, and would stay with him until me or my husband comes back from work. However, she recently discovered she's sick and told us that she can't continue working as she has to go through treatment. We thanked her for telling us and wish she would get better soon. I asked my sister to babysit our son until we can get a new babysitter, given that she doesn't have classes at that time. 
She told me she never agreed to babysit when she moved in here and that I should have told her beforehand so that she could find somewhere else to live. I told her that I knew this wasn't our agreement, but this was something exceptional since our babysitter has medical issues. It's not either of our fault and she would prefer a hundred times to not be in this situation. She still told me that she can't babysit because sometimes she has to go to the library or to study with friends and babysitting would limit her hours of studying. I got angry, maybe too angry, so I told her that we never ask anything from her. We helped her because we wanted to be kind to her and yet she can't even compromise to stay a few hours home just until we find a new babysitter. I ended up telling her she has a week to leave because we will not be providing food or a roof to a witch like her. One of my son's friend's mom is taking care of my son now. They go back to her home together and I pick him up later. My sister tried to apologize but I told her I don't want to live with her because she showed me her true colors. She's also told our family and a lot of them are giving me crap for leaving my sister homeless. My husband, my in-laws and friends support me but it feels as if my family isn't on my side. Makes me think I'm an idiot to be honest. Edit, it wasn't easy to find another person to take care of my son. I had to take two days from work which will be taken from my next paycheck. Not the idiot. You were not asking her to babysit indefinitely, just literally to help out while you were looking for an alternative. She was all fine and dandy with living with you for free while not contributing at all to the household. And the first time you asked her for temporary assistance with something, she made it clear that she had zero intention of helping out ever. You're under no obligation to help someone out who would not reciprocate when you need them. Everyone's the idiot. You were in a tough situation, your babysitter left you for medical reasons and you needed short-term help until you lined up a new sitter. Even if your sister paid some of her expenses, it's reasonable to ask her for help for a couple of weeks while you look for a new sitter. I don't think it's reasonable for your sister to refuse to help you at all, but I echo others that calling her a witch is extreme and undermines your position. Kicking sister out with a week's notice is also harsh. A month is usually standard. If I were you, I would tell your sister that her apology is accepted, but you still want her out within 30 days. And you should apologize for the name calling. This is the best answer. OP, you're angry because your sister lives the life of a child but is an adult in your house. I suggest you breathe and then have a talk with her. Ask her why you're obligated to help her but she doesn't feel the need to reciprocate when you're in need of help. What makes you a villain is the one week. That is hard to do. Tell your parents and other family members that you feel taken advantage of and when they take a side, it shows who they favor in your eyes, so please stay out of it. Your sister bit the hand that fed her because your parents didn't teach her to be grateful. My friend Tara was in an accident about two years ago that put her in a wheelchair. She is able to stand for a short amount of time and take a few steps, so she is pretty self-sufficient, but she needs her wheelchair, especially when she wants to leave the house. The problem is that we live in an old town in the mountains that wasn't built with disabled people in mind. It's hard for Tara to get around during the summer, and it's nearly impossible during the winter since we get a lot of snow here. Tara tells me a lot about how she wants to move out of the mountains to the city, but her husband doesn't want them to because all their family and friends are here. My husband got a great opportunity in the city, so we're moving there. Tara seemed happy. She said that if they move there too, it'll be so good that we will already be there and their kids would have friends there too, our kids. She told her husband that now they don't have to worry about being alone and not knowing anyone there. Her husband shut her down, saying they already talked about this and they need the help their families are providing them here and they can't move away. Tara said they wouldn't need so much help if she could move around more freely in the city. I took Tara's side and the conversation went on until I started getting frustrated and told Tara's husband that he's cruel for forcing his wife to live in the mountains where her mobility is so limited. He got angry, told me I have no idea how hard it is for him even with all the help and I should mind my own business. He's right that I don't know how it is for him, but I do know how it is for Tara and that she's basically a prisoner here. She works too from home and she told me they could afford it. Am I the idiot for what I said? You are the idiot. It was a couple discussion that you should stay out of. You don't know what goes on in their lives, their marriage or their finances. It could be that they can't afford to move and he's too embarrassed to say that. The accident happened to Tara, but her husband has been thrust into the role of caregiver. Caregivers need a support system too. Unless you feel Tara is in danger, mind your own business. How about spouses confined to wheelchairs who live in mountain communities? Do their opinions matter? 
As OP says, it's been very difficult to get around in a wheelchair in this mountain community in the summer and impossible in the winter. Imagine needing a wheelchair to get around a mountain where there's a foot of snow or layer of ice on the ground. She's literally housebound. No one in their right mind would want to be confined to a wheelchair in such a community. Opie's friend is housebound because her husband is an inconsiderate idiot who won't move from the mountains. And he's not a caregiver. First off, he obviously doesn't care about his wife's needs. Second, his wife doesn't need a caregiver. She isn't paralyzed. She can stand for short periods of time. She can walk a few steps. Simply put, she doesn't have a caregiver because she doesn't need one. So, OP, thanks for trying to help your friend. You are not the idiot. I, 29 female, have a sister, 26. She's pregnant and recently had a baby shower. She had a registry of things she needed. I didn't buy anything off of that, though. I had ordered custom-made onesies with my niece's names on it and a changing pad. I don't have much money. I have a geriatric dog who costs a lot. I thought the gift I gave was cute and meaningful and that she'd also be getting a lot of other gifts. After the baby shower, my sister pulled me aside and asked why I didn't pick up anything off her registry. I said I saw those and thought they were cute and the registry is just a suggestion. My sister got annoyed and said the registry is stuff they actually need and that I gave her useless things, then walked away. I guess she talked to my mom because my mom also said to me I should have just picked something from there because I know how my sister is and it would have helped her out. I'm now upset because I was excited about my gift and wasn't aware that the registry was so important. You are the idiot. As someone who received three vacuum cleaners at my bridal shower because people didn't bother to look at the registry, I also hate when people go off on their own. Showers are for people to get what they need, not what someone else thinks they should want. I agree with you. Just had a baby shower. The majority of people didn't buy off the registry, which was frustrating because we put a lot of time into choosing those items, and it was all stuff we really needed. Instead, we now have 100 plus sets of onesies, size 0 to 3, we'll never have enough time to wear, duplicates of things we already had, and not one gift came with a gift receipt. The only appropriate response to a gift is, thank you. I would never dream of saying anything to anyone about their choice to gift us the things that they did. We are extremely grateful that everyone loved us enough to even attend, let alone to want to gift us anything to begin with. Extremely ungrateful and rude of your sister. Not the idiot. Registry is just a suggestion. Gifts are supposed to be given freely and accepted graciously. She's acting entitled. You people are making me wonder if I've dropped onto an alien planet. I don't know when registries stopped being a way to let people who need ideas know what you'd like and started being a requirement. But it's obnoxious.